Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I am Lindsay Mann. I wanted to first um, thank Dr. Sizemore for that introduction and for being here. And we also have a lot of people from um, the BHS Counseling Office and some middle school counselors and principals here too. We will be available afterwards for questions. Um, I also wanna mention the universities that are here in the Commons. We have American National University, Cedarville University, Clark State Community College, Edison State Community College, Kettering College of Medical Arts, Miami University in Middletown, School of Advertising Art, Sinclair, Sinclair Community College, and Wright State University. So they will be available after the presentation to speak with more one-on-one -on -one if you have questions about things at um, their university or college. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So what is College Credit Plus? Um, Ohio's College Credit Plus um, can help students earn college credit and high school credit at the same time by taking college courses from community college, colleges and universities. The purpose of this program is to promote rigorous academic um, pursuits and to provide a wide variety of options to college ready students. Taking a college course from a public college or university through College Credit Plus is free. That means no cost for tuition, books, or fees. If you choose to attend a private college or university, there may be a small um, cost incurred in there. So students in grades 7 through 12 are eligible, and there are many co college course options that are available. So students must meet the same admission requirements as any other incoming freshman at their college of choice. So that is determined by each college. So you have to meet their requirements um, through their application process. Okay, <clears throat> this year students, or I'm sorry, you're going to apply and get admitted. To participate, um, you get admitted into the college, and you may take a placement test to satisfy um, and to satisfy other college, college requirements. Um, that might be a placement test with the college, and actually this year we plan on offering the compass test here at VHS. Um, so you can do that with your college or you could do it here. We don't have the dates completely set, but we are looking to um, like a late April to early May time frame for that. Students can choose any course that applies towards a degree or workforce, workforce certification at a public or participating private college. In addition to being non-remedial, College Credit Plus courses may not be religious in any nature. But it really comes down to students have a choice about what they want to take. Okay, so you, students can earn up to 30 college credit hours per academic year, which includes the summer term. Um, your counselor, which would be either your middle school, high school, and in um, conjunction with your advisor at your college, will help you decide what your, um, what credits to go for, what your eligibility is. And then um, you will not take more than 120 credit, college credit hours while in the program. Okay, so you are beginning your college transcript by participating in College Credit Plus. Students and parents should understand that CCP courses are college level courses and the amount of work, pace, rigor of content in college courses may be much greater than high school courses. The grades from CCP courses also become a part of the student's college transcript and are calculated into the college grade point average. So you're building your transcripts and you're building your college GPA. So poor performance in a college course may affect future university admission, scholarship, and financial aid consideration. Okay, for summer, they have, the state has opened it up that this summer students can take classes over the summer and have that be under the CCP window.
So the summer term, so if you take summer classes this summer, it's going to apply to your fall transcript, okay? Um, and the colleges, they have multiple sessions usually, and a lot of them will start in May. So some of those colleges are already beginning the registration process for summer. So if you're interested in starting in the summer, you have to kind of speed up your process of applying and getting your forms in. Okay, so you have to get those forms in early, like I said. Um, also, make sure you're watching the college deadlines because you don't want to miss any of those. In deciding if you want to participate in College Credit Plus, it is really about your personal academic goals and what you want to get out of high school and college. So you want to find the colleges and courses that fit you. So what your friends taking might not be the same for what you want to do with it. But your colleges and your counselors and advisors can help you select courses um, for your pathway. And a pathway, all that means is when we go to the college and we're meeting with our advisor, we say, I want to go into nursing. And then they will give you a list of courses that would get you on that path. That's what we mean when we say pathways. So pathways are available in the VHS 2016-17 program of studies and also at each college or university. Okay, so... When you take a three hour or more college class, that is going to equal one high school credit. So you can take one semester of English at college in the fall and that equals one high school credit of English. If you do something under that, if you do two college semester hours, it's going to be 0.66 high school credits. One will be 0.33 high school credits. So under what scenarios can you qualify, or can a qualified student use College Credit Plus? So if you're a student who wants to take college courses to satisfy your high school graduation requirements, you can do that. You can complete your high, if you've completed all your high school graduation requirements, or almost all of them, and you want to begin college work, you can do that. Or if you're wanting to just try it, just to get some exposure to college, maybe take a class and just see what you know, is in store for you when you get out of high school, that's another good option too. Okay, so books and fees. Students who are attending a public college will not pay for any required books or fees. Um, if anybody remembers from being in college, you go in there and there's a list of like, three required books and then like five or six optional. And if, when you're first starting out, you usually buy all the books because you think we'll definitely use all of these. <laughs> sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, the school, the district will not cover the optional material, just the required ones. If you want to purchase those on your own, you're more than welcome to, but as far as through College Credit Plus, it's just the required ones. And again, students attending a private college may incur limited costs. Students cover parking expenses, and this would include any parking tickets that you get on campus. The district does not pick those up for you. Okay. So if you fail the course or drop it too late, you may have to pay for it. So if you're taking a class and you either withdraw with an F or receive an F, um, you'll also receive an F on your high school and college transcript. And that will go into your high school and college GPA. If you do not receive a passing grade, the district may, in some instances, seek reimbursement for the amount of state funds paid to the college on your behalf for that college course. The school district may withhold grades and credits received from high school courses taken until reimbursement has been made. I also want to mention this because I think it's important. Um, there may be a financial aid impact in the future. So federal guidelines limit the number of courses a student may take or attempt, even if taken during high school, to 150% of the credits needed for a degree. 
So this may affect you if you're a student that fails something multiple times and has to keep retaking it to try to get through it, or if you switch degree paths multiple times, it could um, have an impact there. But I would really encourage you, if you are worried about it or you have more questions, to talk to the individual college or university that you're interested in attending because they're going to have a lot more detailed information about that for you. Okay. So, weighted grades. I know that's important to a lot of people. It will count, if you're taking a college credit class course at your college, that is going to be the same weight as an honors or an AP course here at BHS. So there will be no um, penalties to your GPA, if you will, to take a college credit class course as long as you're passing it. So grades are to the graduation requirements. The grade you earn in the college course is applied to your high school graduation required classes. So you can take things that you need for graduation at college and we'll count it for both. Okay, another big question is athletic eligibility. Can you be in athletics or extracurricular and participate in college credit plus? Yes, you can. You just have to meet the same requirements you would if you were here full time. So we just, when we're looking at how many classes you're taking between um, maybe your middle school or your high school, we look at um, the number and make sure you, you're adding up to a full-time status, and then you just have to make sure you're passing everything so you stay eligible. Um, I will also mention that if you plan to play your sport in college, you probably want to check with the college you plan on attending after high school about the NCAA eligibility, okay, to make sure the classes you're taking in College Credit Plus are going to meet their standards. Okay, so credits earned through CCP are transferable to all public and many private institutions within Ohio but it is not guaranteed outside of Ohio. Um, I would always, I always recommend that students contact a school if they know that this is the school they want to go to after they graduate, contact someone from their admissions department, explain what their plans are, and see if those credits would be accepted. Um, I also advise that you work with both your college advisor and your school counselor to help you answer questions. And then the transfer assurance guide website or tags it can be found on the Ohio education higher education website is a good resource for looking at those credits and see how they would transfer so potential benefits students will have the opportunity for in-depth study in areas of interest so stuff that they might not have available to them at their their Beaver Creek school they could try at the college level Students will be able to earn college credit while in high school. Students will have another alternate besides AP classes to experience college level work prior to graduating from high school. And students will receive financial support for earning college credit. So some things to consider. There may be conflicts with Beaver Creek City Schools and college schedules. That includes activities, yearly breaks, and then for high school students, that includes your exam week here and your exam week at your college. Those do not always match up. Um, it's probably good they don't match up, <laughs> but um, you have to take those things into consideration when you're looking at that because there, our spring breaks will not be the same. Um, you know, our winter breaks are not always the same time frame. Those are things you want to think about. Students taking classes on campus will be in classes with students of all ages and it will often have unsupervised situations. Poor performance in a CCP course negatively impacts both the high school and the college transcripts and could impact future university admissions and financial aid considerations. And then final, finally, financial responsibility falls on the family if a CCP course is failed or dropped after the deadline. Now usually the colleges have like a 14 day window 
where you can take a class and if it's not working out, they will let you withdraw from that class without it ever showing up on your transcript. If you do that, then you are not financially responsible for that class. But if you drop even the next day, there's going to be a W on your college transcript and then you will be responsible for that. Okay? I encourage you to check with the college you attend to find out what that day is and mark it on your calendar. CCP courses are college level and are not modified for high school or middle school students. So it's awesome that we can have 7th through 12th grade students go and take these courses, but they're, high, they're college classes. They are not modifying them at all for the younger students. All high school graduation requirements, requirements must still be met. So you need 22 minimum credits for graduation and then state testing. The state testing piece is a little bit um, fluid, I guess. Um, taking a CCP class means that the college courses may replace an air test requirement. It varies from class to class, and students should see their counselor to determine if a college course grade becomes the air test score, or if you need to take the air test. You can also see more information about the graduation requirements in the Beaver Creek High School program of studies. Okay, so scheduling at the high school and middle school. And if you guys want to, I'm going to explain the packet you received, so if you want to grab that real quick, we'll go over it. So if you don't have one, it's okay. And I will hold them up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first one is your letter of intent to participate. This has to be turned into the district by April 1st for you um, to be eligible to participate. The next two are district forms that say that you heard the counseling, that we went over the information, and you understand um, the different aspects of College Credit Plus. And then the last one, which is purple for you guys, is something that you will hold on to until you're ready to apply to your college. So the first three, if you want to turn those in tonight, you're more than welcome to. Or if you want to turn them in over the next couple days, that's fine too. The purple one, you turn in to either your middle school counselor or in the counseling office, Mrs. Bellamy. And you'll bring in your application for College Credit Plus with this filled out. So important things that I need from you guys on that is that you will put your name, obviously, and um, that you've included your application and for what college so we know where to send it. And this is just giving us permission to send in your stuff for you. So you're going to say whether you would like to attend CCP part-time or full-time. If you're going to do part-time, You'll circle that, and then I need you to tell me how many classes you want to do at VHS. So what does that part-time look like? If you want to do three classes at VHS and the rest at the college, I want you to write a three. And then down here in these lines, you need to tell me what those classes are going to be. If it's going to be government and math and English, and then you're going to do some other ones at the college, that's fine. But when we're scheduling, the students will pick a full schedule, and then I will go back in later and take everything out that they don't need or don't want to take at VHS. I'll just keep the stuff they have listed on this paper. So it's important for them to do that. Um, and then the student and parent both have to sign it and turn it in, like I said, either to your middle school counselor or to the counseling office at the high school. Okay, so a little bit more information. Did you have a question? Can I explain part time? Okay, so part-time means that you are part-time at VHS or your middle school and part-time at college. So we're splitting the number of credits you can do in a semester between those two places. So for instance, this year some kids are doing three or four classes in the morning at VHS and then they leave and they go take some afternoon or evening classes at their college. Some of them do vice versa. They start the day at their college and take one or two classes in the morning and then they come in around fourth period here or fifth period and finish their day here. Does that make sense? Full time would be their 
they're always at the college. They never come to their middle school or their um, or the high school. They're doing 15 hours at the college. Okay. Yes. Right. So they have to follow their schedule. Okay, so once we set their schedule for the year, if we schedule them up through third period, they can't leave 15 minutes early from third period on the days they have class. They have to stay till the end of third period. Okay? Okay, so let's move on a little bit. So like I said, you can turn in those um, first three forms tonight if you'd like to or any time before um, April 1st. Keep in mind that week we are actually on spring break. So you probably want to get them in early. Make sure that you are aware of your college's deadlines. So you want to apply and then make sure you're getting everything to us with enough time to mail it out to your school for you before the deadline passes. And then like I said before, you should sign up when we go through the scheduling process at your schools over the next month or so. You should sign up for a, school, a full day schedule, like you're going to be there all day long, and then we will go through and adjust that later. Yes? I have a question. What happens if I sign my child up for this, and in August 1st, they decide that this is not what I want to do, and they've lost their scheduling, their full-time scheduling at the mm -hmm. high school, what happens after that? Do you go back and put them back into a class? We you can put them back into as many classes as possible. <laughs> We, it happens, it happens, people change their mind and then we have to go back in and sometimes we can get them into all of their first choices. Sometimes we can't and they have to pick a second. But we have always been able to get them into something. Is there a deadline for that then? Maybe a choice? Um, well, you have to look at what the college's withdrawal dates are because you don't want to be withdrawing after their you know, drop dead date or whatever. So you're not getting financial costs on that. Um, but really, I mean, I would like it to be by the first day of our school day, our school year, so that we know what you're doing and we've got you in the classes you need to be in. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. I think some of them might have some of the copies on hand tonight. I'm not sure. I haven't asked them myself, but usually they do. If not, they should be on their websites and you can print them out and bring them in. Yes. You can just write it on there. Just write summer only. So we're aware. That'd be great. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. They have to participate in College Credit Plus, which is an Ohio program. So I don't know that out of state schools would work with the state on that. But within Ohio, all the public universities in Ohio have to participate in this program. Okay? Yes, in the back. Can you repeat the question? Um, she asked if you I could mean, do. When, when somebody asked the question. Sure. Did you, did you hear that one, everyone? She said, it, could you do online classes through College Credit Plus? And yes, you can. The other part of the question was, could you do online classes out of state? And I don't think that is an option because it is an Ohio program that the state of Ohio has set up and that Ohio schools have to participate in. Um, so I don't think that would be an option, but yes. So if my son does two classes this summer, mm -hmm. he's still would the full course load in the fall, or would that count She asked if her son does two classes in the summer, if she would still need to do, if he would need to do a full schedule in the fall. Yes. The homeschoolers work directly through the state, and if you go to the Ohio Higher Education website, there actually is a whole section on homeschooled students. Mm -hmm. Ohio Higher Education. Okay. Um, so like I said a little bit before, it's really important that when you choose to either take your high school classes if you're doing part-time, 
in the morning or in the afternoon, that has to remain the same throughout the school year. I don't have the ability to, at the semester, flip your whole schedule upside down. So you need to make sure when they're scheduling for their next semester of college that they're picking classes in that same time frame that we did in the fall. Um, also be aware of your travel time between your Beaver Creek School and, um, and your college. We have found that, especially for places like Wright State and Sinclair, 30 minutes is really not enough drive time when you add in parking and walking across campus and things like that. So you need probably an hour. Okay, so like I said, the counselors at each school will help you when you're picking your schedule and we're you know, mapping everything out between what you're gonna do at your Beaver Creek School and your college school, we'll work with you on that. But keep in mind that you cannot take more than the equivalent of 10 high school credits. Okay, so that means you can't do seven full classes at your Beaver Creek School, middle school or high school, and then do 15 credit hours at the college on top of that. Okay, it has to be a combination and we work with you on that and making sure it adds up. And, you, and then again, you have to meet full-time status between the two. So the opposite end of that, you can't take two high school classes and one college credit class. That's not going to be enough credits for you. For the college's responsibility in this, um, if, even if you're doing an online class or you actually go and you set foot on the campus every day, they will assign you a college advisor that will help you with the scheduling process, that will kind of guide you on your way. I strongly advise you to meet with them because they are experts in their curriculum. You know, I'm, I'm good at working with those people, but they know everything about their school. I don't. Okay, so deadlines. You have from now until April 1st, like I mentioned, to turn in the intent forms and those financial responsibility forms that are in your packet tonight. Each college will have their own application deadline, so you need to be mindful of those. And then, if you um, need more information over anything that I went over tonight, there is a lot of great information on this website at the Ohio Higher Education website. Um, there's a whole section on frequently asked questions. If someone's asked a question, it's up there with the answer. 